Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We're going to meditate on that section from Ephesians, especially the words that we have a great inheritance, guaranteed and eternal from God. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, you ever seen that bumper sticker often fastened to the back of an RV? We're spending our children's inheritance. Now, it's been a while since I've seen a lot of those. Maybe it was more popular in the past. But you get the idea. Basically, people saying, forget the kids. We're going to spend the money on ourselves. And they wouldn't expect much of an inheritance. Maybe you in your life have received an inheritance, set up an inheritance, have some connection with that. If you've ever written a will or heard a will read, often at a sad moment, that is. But an inheritance, sometimes unexpected, and sometimes, well, maybe it's already been spent, an inheritance. Though we may or may not ever receive an inheritance here on this earth, God promises that he has an inheritance waiting for us. Jesus tells us that on the last day, he will tell all who believe in him, come, take your inheritance prepared for you from the creation of the world. And that's what we want to focus on this morning. What is our inheritance and how do we receive that inheritance? We receive that inheritance through blessings. In our first verse of our lesson for today, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Maybe you've heard that song, count your blessings instead of sheep when you're trying to fall asleep at night. Not a bad thing to do. In fact, here we've got some very concrete blessings that God says are ours through faith in Jesus Christ. He invites us to praise him, to be giving praise to God, the Father, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, everything you need, you have in Christ. What are those blessings? Well, first of all, blessing number one, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Those are staggering words if you comprehend and take them to heart and see what they all mean. The the reason that you believe in Jesus is that God was thinking about you before you were born. Before your parents were born, before their parents were born, before their parents were born, before Adam and Eve were even created, before this world existed, God chose you. I don't know about you, but when you stop and think that God chose us before the creation of the world, that's a pretty awesome thing to comprehend, to consider, to take to heart. God was thinking about you that long ago. He chose you. Sometimes people today think that we choose God. Well, no, Jesus says, you you did not choose me, but I chose you. That's the reason that you and I believe. And And that's a gracious thing. That's a wonderful thing. That's a blessing to know that God chose us. That means I can't be making a mistake here. I can't get it wrong. I can't mess it up. We know that God chose us before the creation of the world. That is intended to be a comfort for all who believe in Jesus, to know who you are and how long God has been thinking about you. And not only that, in love, he predestined us for adoption to his sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Here's blessing number two. Not only did he choose you before the world was even created, he predestined you. In other words, he worked out a plan. He was thinking about you. Now, you and I, well, we may make plans for our daily lives. Some of us have jobs. Some of us have other things that we do. But we we sometimes make a plan. I know that sometimes I make plans, and with the job I have, my plans can change in an instant. It just, you never know quite. Maybe you have the same problem, too, that you make plans, and sometimes those plans are changed. But you and I maybe make a plan for a day. I don't know if you get out to a week, maybe a month. Planning a year in advance is awful difficult, especially after the couple years we've just been through. Planning, planning. 
Would you imagine your parents making a plan for you and your life? Sometimes parents have hopes and dreams for a person, but to make plans? That would be a little bit presumptuous. To make plans, grandparents thinking about you? How, how could you ever think that? God not only chose you before the creation of the world, but he also set a plan in place so that you would hear the gospel message in your life, that you would know about Jesus, that you would see your sins against him, and that you would trust in Jesus as your Savior. He predestined you. He worked out a whole plan to not only choose you, but to make sure you heard about Jesus. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. You and I, by nature, we were children of wrath. We were deserving only of God's anger, separation from God forever and eternity. That's what our sins have merited us. But rather than separating ourselves from him, God adopted us. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. The reason you and I believe is because of God's plan and God's will. God wanted us to believe in him. God gave us Jesus Christ so we could believe in him, and so through Jesus we could be adopted by him. Through him, through Jesus, you and I are blameless and holy in God's sight. How can that be, Pastor? You, you and I know we, we know our own sins against God, but that's what the forgiveness of sins is all about. God has given us forgiveness through Jesus, and because we have forgiveness, now God tells us, I'm adopting you. <laughs> You're my child. I want you, instead of being a child of wrath, I've taken all my wrath and poured that on Jesus, and instead I'm going to give you an eternity of glory in Jesus, through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. So what do you do? What do you do when you hear of these wonderful blessings? To the praise of his glorious grace. This is something to be praised in our lives, something we too easily take for granted we might sing that song, Amazing Grace, but when you stop and think about it, it truly is amazing that God would love me. You and I each can think that. It was amazing that God would love me, a sinner. Why would God love me when I have rebelled and hurt? It was because of his amazing grace that he loves us. It's an undeserved love. God, God loves us even though we don't deserve to be loved by him. And that's what we want to praise when we sing our songs. That's what we, what we want to praise when we live our lives. We want to live our whole lives to the glory of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So, blessing, God chose us. Blessing, God planned for you to hear about Jesus so you could be saved from an eternity of wrath and be given an eternity of happiness forever in heaven, to be given the forgiveness of your sins. Blessing number three, in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. It, it needed to happen because we were children of wrath, because we were headed for an eternity of suffering, we needed to be redeemed, we needed to be bought back for that. Somebody had to pay the price. It wasn't like God was a kindly grandfather that said, oh, they can do whatever they want. I mean, I, I kind of know I'm, I'm a grandfather too, and I kind of have that tendency with with grandkids, they'll let the parents discipline and I'll let them do it a little bit more than they ought to maybe. That's not the way God is. God is holy and perfect and he demands that everybody in his presence be holy and perfect also. That means we can't have any sins on us. That means we can't be in any way imperfect because God has said that if we're not perfect, if we're not holy, well, that's why God redeemed us. In him we have redemption through his blood. Blood needed to be shed in order to pay for that, but it couldn't be just anybody's blood. It couldn't be an animal's blood. It couldn't be any other human being's blood. It had to be the blood of God himself. That's why Jesus became man. God and man and one person could be there on the cross, and that when Jesus was stretched out on the cross and his blood was running down his body, God looked on that blood and said, your sins are paid for. You've been redeemed. Everything you've ever done wrong wiped out through the blood of Jesus Christ. And why again did God do that? In accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. 
That's why you and I want to be forgiving people. The forgiveness of sins. You and I have received that. That whole eternity of wrath, God's forgiven you. He's given you the perfection of Jesus. You're going to live forever. And as you take to heart the fact that you've been forgiven, that you have the blood of Jesus Christ covering all your sins, that you have that forgiveness, I pray that that forgiveness will move you to be a forgiving person also. Maybe it's a person not too far away from you. Maybe it's a person you haven't seen for a while. Maybe it's just somebody that's driving crazy down the street and cuts you off. Maybe it's a person at work or a neighbor. It's hard, isn't it, sometimes to be forgiving when somebody's hurt us, something's done wrong against us, somebody's made us feel bad. It's hard to be forgiving, but is that not why we need to pray that more often? Forgive us our sins. Oh, that's right. I owe a debt to God greater than, he can poss- than I can possibly pay, and he's forgiven my debt. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those Oh, that driver that cut me off, I should be more forgiving towards him, right? And not that I condone anything that anybody has done wrong, but I want to be ready to forgive, to have that love in my heart, to be ready to forgive when somebody sees their sins and says they're sorry. Yeah, it does mean showing people their sins. You saw how popular Amos was in sharing the forgiveness of sins with the children of Israel, they didn't want to see their sins and therefore did not take to heart the forgiveness that you and I do here. They rejected it. How sad. And it may be too that somebody rejects the forgiveness you want to offer them, but it's better in your heart that you've already forgiven them and that when they say they're sorry that you're ready to tell them, I forgive you. Because you, yourself, have the forgiveness of your sins. So that's blessing number three you can sit and count on in life. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. You and I can sometimes think this world's out of control or maybe we look at our lives and our lives are out of control or maybe our focus in life doesn't end up being on Jesus. Maybe our focus in life is on our health problem or maybe our focus in life is on how crazy this world has gotten or maybe our focus in life is something other than these blessings from God. The more that we focus our lives on these blessings from God, the more we realize, well, it might seem like everything's out of control. But look what God's going to do. He will bring everything to unity, to, all, he, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. When Jesus Christ returns on the last day and tells you and all believers, come, take your inheritance prepared for you from the creation of the world, when he gives you that invitation, which you know is fully due to his grace, when you hear that, oh, then you, it's, it'll all be... It'll all be perfectly understandable. It'll be perfectly seen. You say, oh, that's why we went through all those things. That's why this thing happened to me. That's why these things happened in our... Whatever it is, it will be all made perfectly clear on the last day. He will bring to unity all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. When Jesus Christ, the great King of all, our Savior, returns... He does this with all wisdom and understanding. And the very fact that you know about what's going on, God has told you he chose you before he created this world. He worked out a whole plan so that you in the history of your life would hear about Jesus, be brought to faith in Jesus, trust in Jesus as your Savior, see the blood of Jesus Christ as your forgiveness. He had that whole plan worked out for you. And then he promises you he will carry you right to heaven. God wants you with this lesson to see the big picture, to to not get so focused on things when you're so close you can't see the big picture at all. God wants you to see the big picture from eternity to the present to eternity. He wants you to keep that in mind. He's got this all worked out, and, and he's made known the mystery of his will in Jesus Christ according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. 
The very fact that God loves you, has sent his son to die for you, has given you eternity, and it's all because of his grace, something you and I do not deserve. You and I can sit back and say, you know, I'm truly a blessed person. Doesn't matter what other difficulties, troubles, hardships are going on in life. When I sit down and count my blessings, those are the important things to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment at exactly the right time Jesus Christ died for our sins, exactly the right time you were told about Jesus, exactly the right time you hear his word and are kept close to him in faith. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. I mean, how can you not praise his glory when you and I see that because of God's grace, because of his great love for us, God has given us this blessing of being chosen. He's given us this blessing of a whole plan worked out for us, predestined to bring us to faith. He's given us Jesus to die for our sins and given us eternal life. He's given us all these blessings. How can we not praise God? And when you understand and take to heart that God is made you to praise him, well then you've kind of read your instruction book. I sometimes try to put things together without reading the instructions. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes it's a big mess. Sometimes we make a big mess of our lives too when we don't understand why we were, we were created. God created you to praise him. God created you so that you could be in union with him. God created you so that he could share his love with you. God created you so that you could be his people and he could be your God. That's what it means that we might be for the praise of his glory. When you and I see God face to face in heaven, you and I will understand perfectly then why we will want to praise his glory forever and ever. To, to walk with him in that glory, to enjoy that glory forever. And it's that kind of praise that you and I seek here in this life also, to keep in mind the instruction manual that you and I were intended for and created for, praising the glory of his awesome, wonderful, amazing grace that has given us all these blessings. What a glorious gift God has given to us. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation. That's why God has given you this message, so that you could simply trust that Jesus died for you and you will be saved. And that's why we want to do the same for others too. What is our purpose in life? Should we not do everything we can within our powers, within our abilities, within our gifts, to share this message of truth, just like Jesus sent out those 12 disciples. So God sends you and I to do what we can in whatever way we can, and there's just so many different ways we can do it, through our offerings, through talking with people, through sharing the message like we're doing on video here. It's just amazing all the different ways that you and I can share Jesus with other people, and, and that's what you want to just pray about. How, how can I share Jesus with the people around me so they can hear the message of truth, the gospel, so that they have salvation also? When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, another blessing of God, that God sent his Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. This is a temple of God you have, your body. It's a temple of God, a temple of the Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glorious great glory, uh, to the praise of his glory. We know one day that we will be with God forever in heaven. And that's what we want to emphasize here at the moment. The Holy Spirit working in our hearts, keeping us in the faith, causing us to see our sins, leading us to see that Jesus died for our sins, reminding us that we have the gift of eternal life. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing our inheritance. You may or may not receive an inheritance from another person in this life or be intending to give one to someone else, but God has an inheritance for you. God has an inheritance waiting for you that's beyond your wildest imagination. After heaven and earth are destroyed, he will give us a new heaven and a new earth to live in 
And we will enjoy there a place where there's no more pain and no more sorrow and no more death. We will live in the glory of God forever and we will enjoy his presence and his love. We will experience what it means to be fully loved and known as we are already fully loved and known. The inheritance awaiting you beyond your wildest imagination. If you could imagine being an heir of some wealthy person here on this earth, you think, oh, that's great. But it's nothing because all that money one day will disappear and you and I will not be here on this earth forever to enjoy it anyway. But when you get to heaven, you're going to have an inheritance from God. And that inheritance from God, it'll last through an eternity. And you are an heir of God himself, adopted as his child. He's made you his own. And because he's made you his own, he's got a whole big inheritance waiting for you. One that you'll be able to enjoy forever. So did you know that you were an heir? Did you know what you're going to inherit? Oh, no. We don't know completely, perfectly what we're all going to inherit. Just the very fact that we've been made heirs, that we've been made children of God, that he's adopted us, that he himself has in mind for us these wonderful blessings, that in itself is enough. But the inheritance you will receive is beyond our wildest imagination. It, it's a glory and a privilege and to be fully loved to have everything taken care of for an eternity. This is what God has given you in Jesus. And he wants you to know that you are his heir and a great inheritance is awaiting you. Amen.